Hey, I'm David and it's finally here. This is the first episode of the free DaVinci Resolve course that you can follow on this Clicker YouTube channel. Before I do anything else, I want to invite you to subscribe for next episode and for more um, editing stuff that we'll be doing on this channel in the future also filmmaking and I want to um, make a quick disclaimer that all this knowledge that I'll be sharing it is collected during six years um, from the people in the industry and most of, uh, of the knowledge is collected online so you can find it but I, I really spent a long time uh, a long time and I just want to make the process quicker for you and this first episode um, it's it's the least interesting uh, at least in my opinion and I want to apologize if I uh, maybe say something wrong and of course you can uh, uh, search more on the internet if you find something that is not explained well so yeah now with that out of way um, I don't want to uh, you know make this any longer let's just go and start with this um, tutorial with learning so let's go DaVinci Resolve uses databases and there are two types, there is disk and Postgres. Postgres needs a server app to run and it's ideal for facilities with, with multiple systems that need to share projects all the time. Disk database uh, save the project metadata in a simple folder structure that is easy to backup with normal IT procedures or disk copy. The disk database files are located in logical pads. You can still export the whole project to another folder system if you wish to share. They can be used remotely with laptop or external disk on the go. It is easy to do, you just have to create new database. You can do that by clicking on the button new database and you type in the name of database and the file location on the disk you want to save it to. I would recommend using disk database unless you have a specific need for life sharing of projects. When you create your database, in that database you can create folder structure, which I recommend. Uh, you can create as many folders as you want and store as many projects as you want but I encourage you to be very organized as much as possible uh, because it will be easier for you down the line. My folder structure consists of films, commercials and YouTube. In the YouTube for example I have two other folders, DaVinci Resolve course and Quick Tips. In there I have saved my projects and there is one extra tip that I'll be doing in the next lesson. You can very easily backup and restore databases if you need them somewhere in the future. Project settings in DaVinci Resolve. First of all we have presets. Of course you can save presets, load them and use them. They are really really useful. Master settings. First you can set up is timeline resolution. It's the resolution of a project you are working with, but bear in mind that you can change that. And especially if you have, for example, lower spec hardware, you can work uh, with timeline resolution that is smaller than, for example, full HD and get more performance. It's really easy to change, but don't forget to set it back to the wanted resolution at the end of the project. Aspect ratio. You can choose between square, 69 anamorphic cinemascope. I use most of the time square. If you know that you need something else, then you can use that. Timeline frame rate, you have to set that before the first clip. 
because after you cannot change it actually you can change it with the first clip that you import it will be the frame rate then of that first clip you have to be careful with that if you use presets or the method I'll be showing in the next video and you will not have to be worried about that and then playback frame rate I recommend you to use the same as timeline frame rate or maybe if you have some other need you can use of course something else video field processing is for interlaced footage so if you're working with that you can enable video field processing optimized media and render cache this is very useful if you render a lot or if you use proxies workflow in the DaVinci Resolve I recommend you to use something really lightweight like DNX HR LB because your playback will be really smooth and DaVinci won't lag and it won't take as much space on your drive as the default option would working with folders cache location files and gallery still location you can set that up as you want but i would recommend a disk that is dedicated to cache that is fast please don't use your system drive because this is the worst use another partition or whatever but just don't use the system drive and then last frame interpolation you want to use that when you are slowing down footage for example and you lack frames i mean you have 20 fps footage and you want to slow it down and then when you do that natively results aren't the best it's really choppy but if you use something like optical flow you can get really good results optical flow tries to recreate stills that are missing in between the ongoing footage topmost option of these three is the most lightweight but it gives you the worst results and the bottom one is the best it gives you the best results but it's intensive for your computer so you have to choose some balance if you want the best use the best input scaling by default it is uh, set to scale entire image to fit i also like to use center crop with no resizing and then there is output scaling you can match the timeline settings you have all the same options as in input scaling and now color management it is really important chapter i was mind blown when i heard about this so by default davinci resolve uses yrgb color science for example when you use that and shooting lock you are most probably using lats to match two shots especially if you are shooting with different cameras you are trying to get as close as possible to that desired look but LUTs are not the best way. The better way is using DaVinci YRGB Color Managed Color Science because this is a mathematical way and you are telling Resolve exactly in what color space your footage was shot and in what color space you are working. So everything is mathematically correct and you don't have to be kind of accurate you are accurate so you have to choose a color input space in which your footage was shot and then timeline color space and output color space is the color space of the video you are working on and you want to output uh, your final video also what you want to include if you don't have the best results is luminance mapping and uh, saturation mapping and of course you want to maybe increase number of nits there is certain amount of nits that your footage has and that your monitor can show if you don't allow your monitor use all the nits it can use uh, it might be clipping result of that so you want to just put it exactly or a bit higher you get the best results and if you get the worst results you can always go back to default and that is DaVinci YRGB 
And lastly, in this project settings, there is Fairlight options by default. And I think in free version, you have only 48 kilohertz audio sample rate. You want to use that anyway. And then there is setting target loudness level. It is very important. And I'll talk about that more in the audio lessons. But if you're using YouTube, you want to set your target loudness to minus 13 loves. It is standard for YouTube. For example, broadcast standard is minus 23. But again, I will talk about that more in the audio chapters. Memory and GPU under system settings. Well, you can see my settings, but you want to enable as much memory for DaVinci Resolve to use and Fusion also because it will give you the best result and also GPU configuration. You can use other settings or if you have a Nvidia card, you, you can use CUDA. See it for yourself. Next cool setting is audio plugins. There is a lot of, for example, free VST audio plugins that you can find on the internet and then you can include. You just download them, install them, and then you click add button and add a location where you installed your plugin and just restart resolve and you'll be seeing your plugin loaded. Also very important thing, project save and load. There is option to load all timelines when opening projects. I don't like to use that. Personal preference, there are two other options, life save and project backups. Life save I did use. For the ones that don't know, life save is a feature that practically saves every step that you make in DaVinci Resolve. And it is great, but I experienced a lot more crashes when I used that. So I decided to stop with it and I didn't use it for quite some time. Again, you can try it. What I like to use is project backups. I perform backups every five minutes. It is a really great option if you don't want to lose a lot of work, if you forget to save and the program crashes. For that, you also have to choose project backup location. By default, it is set in the DaVinci folder, but you can change that how you want. Here in editing, under general settings, uh, standard generator duration, you can set that to whatever you want, but I think five seconds is good. But what I did change is standard transition duration. I set it to, to frames for disabling, popping or something like that. I suggest uh, the same to you. And that's it. Hopefully it was very helpful to you. And if it was, um, you can share this. Uh, comment down below what you think about this whole course and how satisfied you are. And of course, uh, subscribe for um, next episodes and for more uh, stuff about editing and filmmaking in general. Uh, so once again, I hope really that it was helpful. And um, yeah, I hope that I see you in the next episode when we are going to talk about folder structure, importing stuff and one really important um, idea or thing, whatever, it's uh, creating um, presets. So yeah, um, this is it for today and I want to all of you really nice day and goodbye.